Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here. Welcome back to another video. So the drama over at Dyson Ye keeps on coming, it seems. Just today, weeks after Marcus Lado left EA, even more top brass, it seems, are departing the studio. Is there cause for worry or is this simply everyday business in a games company? Let's have a little chat about this and what it could possibly mean for the future of Battlefield. It's been a funny couple of weeks so far. It feels like one video is about somebody leaving EA and DICE, and then the next video is all happy and it's about Season 7 releasing. By the way, guys, if you are interested in the Season 7 content, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. I will be covering everything in Season 7 and beyond right here on this channel, including everything you guys want to know about the new vehicle. I'm also going to be live streaming, I think tomorrow, the reveal video. I really want to get my, my expression, my reaction down on video because if the vehicle that I think is going to be released is released and it is in the trailer, that's going to be super exciting and I really can't wait to see what they have planned for us and pick everything apart. But that's not what we're talking about today. So this comes right off of the back of Marcus Leto leaving Ridgeline Studios and then DICE of course, consequently shutting down the studio amidst a 670 person layoff at EA. Now, Marcus did actually leave, according to Laura Mielli, the president of EA, he left of his own volition. So she says here that Marcus Leto recently made a personal decision to leave the project and to ensure our work continues uninterrupted, we immediately appointed leadership at Criterion to oversee our single player work. So it sounds like they shut down Ridgeline Games, maybe in part because Marcus Leto left. He also, if you recall, posted on Twitter and said that he had made the decision to leave the company and it sounded like he left on bad terms because, if you recall, he actually wasn't sure where he was going to go, if he was going to go to another studio at all. It sort of sounded as though he was possibly considering packing in game development entirely. But it's that old, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Did Marcus Leto get too much pressure from EA, decide to leave, and then they had to make redundancies, and they said, oh, you know what, maybe we'll just shut down Ridgeline Games since their leader has gone, and the other guy that created it with Marcus Leto, I can't quite remember his name. Let's just roll these people, some of them, into our other studios like Ripple Effect, and keep on trucking with the campaign. Or was it the other way around? They made the redundancies, they approached Marcus and said, hey man, we can move you around to another company, and he simply wasn't having any of that, and instead he kind of got the huff and left. Whatever the case may be, I think we'd all hope that that was going to be the end of it, but it seems that apparently it is not. With today, the news that Craig Morrison, who was promoted to studio creative director in replacement of Lars Gustafsson in December 2022, he has left the company. Back in February, in fact, so I'm not sure how he missed that one, but hey, here we are. So obviously he was in a, a pretty high up position. I'm not exactly sure how the structure over at DICE works, but studio creative director sounds like you have quite a lot of power, a lot of creative freedom, or you would hope so. And I mean, Lars Gustafsson was doing his job. If you're not familiar with him, he's referred to as Mr. Battlefield. And he's been making basically all of the Battlefield games in existence until he recently left to pursue other endeavors. Now, it doesn't really surprise me that Lars left when he did, because that's pretty much all he's worked on is Battlefield for the entirety of his professional career. So I can completely understand that he wanted to do something different. And let's not forget, he's coming off the back of Battlefield 5 and then Battlefield 2042, which weren't really the glory days for DICE in EA. I think it's fair to say that. And so I understand that he thought that was the best time for him to leave and pursue something else. And he went on to make his own studio called TTK Games. And he even took some of the DICE developers with him. I know the former weapons designer, Alexander Formoso, he went with him and a number of others as well. But I do find it a little bit alarming that Craig here after only having been in the position for a little more than a year, is already leaving. I mean, after all, it must have been a pretty nice job. I can only assume that it was one of the better paid jobs over at DICE. You know, studio creative director is, is pretty high up there. Now, I suppose the question is, did he leave or was he made redundant or did they simply get rid of him? So for me, I think there's two possibilities here. First of all, he may simply have been part of the 670 layoffs. After all, you know, people who are working down, let's say, like the worker ants of a company, 
Not that I'm referring to game developers as ants, but you get the metaphor, right? People like 3D artists, programmers, those sorts of people, they are sort of integral to the company. You can take a 3D artist who's working on something, and if you're going to shut down that project, you can more often than not take them and move them onto something else, because those skills are applicable across whatever your companies are working on. If you want to save money, a lot of the time companies will look at the higher-ups, exactly people like that, creative directors, sort of sit down with them and say, what do you actually do on a daily basis? And do I need to be paying you this super high wage every month to work at my company? Or can we just get rid of your position and whatever you were doing, we can put it onto something else and, and roll it into their job description. So that certainly is a possibility. However, most of the time people get made redundant. And this is unfortunately an experience that I've been through myself. I was made redundant at a company that I'd worked at for 10 plus years. You sort of don't really know what to do with yourself, right? You don't have a plan. All of a sudden, you just get told you're being made redundant. And for a little while, you go home and you start licking your wounds, thinking what your next step is, what you want to do. And usually, you will receive severance pay for a number of months so that you can get your bearings and decide what new direction you want to take in your life. But Craig here has already found a job at a new development studio called Blue Scarab Entertainment. Now, I've never heard of these guys, so it doesn't surprise me at all to find out that they are a brand new startup. There is no website that I can find, but over on LinkedIn, it says they have two to 10 employees, and it says good friends making great games. And most of the people here are located in Sweden and specifically Stockholm, which is of course where DICE is located. So it wouldn't surprise me if perhaps a number of people from DICE who got laid off or maybe some old friends of Craig's contacted him and said, hey man, do you want to come with us and create this new startup and be the director over there? And he decided to jump on that opportunity. So I think that is the other possibility that he decided for whatever reason he wanted to leave DICE and EA. Now let's remember, he was in probably one of the highest creative job positionings that is available at the studio. And Marcus Leto, who obviously wasn't happy at his departure from EA and DICE or how things were being run there in some capacity, he was also in a creative position. He was heading up the campaign. He is the co-creator of the Halo universe. So I was actually really excited to see what Marcus was going to bring to the game and, you know, whether the campaign could be improved because, let's face it, Battlefield campaigns, they're not exactly the most amazing narratively driven stories that I've ever played through. They're just sort of okay. So here we see two people, both of them in creative positions and both of them leaving the company under suspicious circumstances. Now, I don't want to start doomsaying about the next Battlefield game and saying that it's it's a lost cause and it's hopeless before we even know anything about the game. I'm sure it's still totally on track despite Marcus Leto's departure and despite Craig's departure. But this is definitely a little bit worrisome. This obviously wasn't just a singular event with Marcus Leto now seeing Craig leaving as well. And honestly, seeing both of them in creative positions worries me because that makes me think that EA are starting to step on their toes. It makes me think that they have a vision for the game, whether that vision was good or not for us as players, I don't really know. But it sounds like whatever vision they have could have possibly been clashing with EA's vision from their higher-ups, and they just sort of stamped down on their dreams, if you like, and told them, no, you either fall in line or you can go somewhere else, and perhaps they decided that they wanted to go somewhere else. Now, of course, it goes without saying, guys, this is all sheer speculation. I have absolutely no bloody idea what happened, if that wasn't completely crystal clear to you. But I think it's fair to say that this doesn't appear to be a positive thing for the future of Battlefield and for the development overall. Like I said, it does worry me a little bit, and it's mostly due to EA and DICE's recent release history that it worries me so much. Any little thing, any disturbance, has alarm bells setting off in my head, and honestly, I don't think that's my fault. I feel like that is DICE and EA's fault that the player base, myself, and probably a lot of you guys feel this way. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. I'd be very interested to hear your guys' takes on it. Go and check out this video if you missed this one the other day, all about some new Season 7 details that seem to be coming to light. Although, of course, tomorrow we are going to be getting the trailer, so then we'll have even more details. But, you know, I need views and stuff, so go watch the video, guys. Otherwise, have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.